This mysterious horror tale begins with a mother and her young daughter embarking on a journey through the depth of the Swiss Alps as they search for mushrooms. While scouring carefully around the area for more mushrooms, the young girl stumbles upon a peculiar sight, a luminous ray of light radiating from a mysterious boy. The young boy then signals to her, inviting her to come closer to a cluster of mushrooms. While she gathers these newfound treasures, a horrifying discovery falls upon her. She uncovers skeletal remains concealed among the mushrooms, causing her to let out an instinctive scream of fear. Thereafter, the local authorities quickly rush to the scene and investigate the mysterious puzzle surrounding the skeleton source. After a detailed examination of the body, it is revealed that a man had tragically died in that exact location nearly 30 years ago. Hoping to discover the true identity of this mysterious person who guided the young girl, one of the police officers presents her with a set of photographs showing boys who had been reported missing. Without hesitation, the girl points to the picture of the boy she had seen, a young boy named Albert who had been reported missing in 1975. However, the police officer, while still struggling to believe, contemplates the possibility that the girl had truly encountered the ghost of the boy. Noticing the doubt in the officer's attitude, the mother shares a story about a different police officer who firmly refused to believe in anything supernatural. We're taken back to 1975 in the Greisen Alps, Switzerland. A crowd of people, including the local police sheriff, Sebastian Rausch, gathers around the village church as they discover a young priest hanging in the church shower. After thoroughly examining the evidence, it is concluded that the priest took his own life by hanging. Afterwards, the villagers proceed to interrogate both the local bishop and the authorities regarding the motive behind his self-inflicted death. In response, the bishop attributes the tragic event to an ominous presence such as the devil that infiltrated his spirit and compelled him to end his own life. Following the priest's funeral, while the mourners are walking towards the church, a young girl walking next to Ryush notifies him that an unfamiliar woman is trailing behind them. This woman, later known as Senentunchi, is seen covered in dirt and dressed only in a shawl and is a mystery to everyone. At that moment, the poor woman suddenly collapses, but Ryush manages to catch her just in time and quickly takes her to the police station. Shortly after, a doctor arrives and following a brief examination concludes that Senentunchi is suffering from amnesia. He suggests sending her to a mental asylum, but Ryush opposes this notion due to his concerns for the lady. Senin Tunchi's arrival sparks rumors and suspicions among the villagers about her potential involvement in the priest's death. Additionally, it becomes apparent that she's unable to speak and can only express herself through gestures, further complicating her ability to defend against these accusations. Later that day, Ryush enters the pub with Senin Tunchi searching for a place for her to stay. Shortly after, Teresa, the mayor's wife, informs him that the woman had been on Mount Thistle prior to arriving in the village. She then presents him with a wooden carved goat that she had accidentally left behind when they first encountered her. She adds that this goat was crafted by a man named Albert, and her brother, Erwin, is currently staying with him in a cabin located in the Alps. Thus, she insists that Ryu should visit the cabin and ensure that everything is alright. Now, the villagers suspect that the priest did not actually kill himself, but was rather murdered, attributing it to this mysterious woman. They become cautious and hostile towards her, urging Ryush to take her with him to the Alps rather than allowing her to stay at his house. As a result, he confines her in a jail cell at the police station and proceeds towards the mountains. However, upon arriving at the cabin, Ryush discovers that neither Albert nor Erwin are there, so he leaves them a message requesting that they contact him and head back to the village. Afterwards, Ryush comes back to the station and discovers the local bishop waiting for him. The bishop then points the cross at Senentunchi and asserts that her strong revulsion to crosses signifies her being a devil. However, suspecting that her upbringing might have been different, Ryush angrily escorts the bishop out of the police station, 
In a flashback, Erwin and Albert receive a visit from Martin, a man offering to help with their household tasks. When Erwin asks Martin why he's in the mountains, he explains that he needed to get away from the chaotic city life following a recent breakup. During a long night while being drunk and high on absinthe, Erwin shares with Martin the intriguing tale of Senin Tinchi. In this story, three herdsmen plagued by loneliness and a desire for female companionship created a doll out of various household objects in their sheer desperation. Surprisingly, the devil takes pity on their plight and turns the doll into a beautiful, real woman known as Senin Tunchi. Yet, after the three men have enjoyed her carnal delights, she turns the table and finishes them off before skinning and stuffing them. Like the story, Erwin decides to dabble with the supernatural and fashion a similar doll which is given life by the devil to see to their every need. Albert then skillfully crafts a doll out of a broom, rags, and hay. The following day, to their astonishment, an actual woman appears in their lodge dressed in the doll's attire. Nevertheless, despite being aware of the tragic outcome of the story in which Senin Tunchi kills all three men, Erwin and Martin commit a despicable act by repeatedly forcing them onto her. In one of these attacks, Senin Tunchi bites Martin's hand, which later becomes infected with tetanus. Moreover, seeking revenge, she mercilessly slaughters all of Erwin's sheep and goats the next day and disappears. However, she's later found by Martin in the same barn, and in his attempt to protect her from an enraged Erwin, he hides her in their storehouse, promising to come back soon. Back in the present, Senin Tunchi is left in the care of the mayor and his wife Teresa, while Ryush is away. Teresa offers her blessed bread with a carved cross, but as soon as the woman sees the cross, she attacks her, causing her unborn child to be dead. The bishop then investigates the villagers, claiming that Senin Tunchi is a devil's incarnation who has returned to bring destruction. Furthermore, he accuses her of being responsible for the recent death of the mayor's unborn child. And to support his theory, the bishop presents a photograph from 1950, showing a Romani woman who bears a striking resemblance to the current mysterious woman. This Romani woman had vanished 25 years ago and was suspected of arson and the death of three herdsmen in the same year as the photo. Later, Senin Tunchi appears at Ryusha's house and in an attempt to protect her, he decides to take her away from the village. However, before he can do so, the furious villagers discover him alone and unconscious in his car following a minor accident. In the meantime, Senin Tunchi escapes, prompting the furious villagers to turn their aggression towards Ryush instead. Upon returning home that night, he discovers a neo-pagan symbol on his door, drawn by members of the church to ward off evil. In that instant, Ryush recalls Senin Tunchi's drawing a similar symbol in an attempt to communicate with him. This realization then triggers a suspicion that the bishop may possess information about the woman's origins. Considering his role in instigating the villagers and turning them against her, driven by his suspicions, Ryush proceeds to the cathedral in search of answers. Within the sacred walls, he uncovers a section of the chapel that has remained hidden for ages. During his exploration, Ryush stumbles upon a secret door that leads to an underground chamber hidden beneath the chapel. This chamber is adorned with four neo-pagan symbols on the walls and a non-Christian image of Mary portraying her as a sun goddess in the Alps. Notably, Ryush discovers a straw doll and remnants of food on a plate, indicating that someone had been held captive there. At this moment, Ryush has a sudden realization that Senin Tunchi was held captive in this very cell and had even crafted a doll resembling her absent mother. Furthermore, Ryush recalls how she had reacted with distress when he had locked her in the cell, only to find solace in the presence of a familiar image of Mary when he had given her his chain. Besides this, Ryush soon makes another startling discovery. The Romani woman shown in the old photograph is, in fact, the mother of Senin Tunchi. To his shock, he learns that she had been harmed and impregnated by the bishop 25 years ago. Seeking safety, the woman's mother sought refuge in the remote mountain house that belonged to a trio of herdsmen. Unfortunately, the bishop eventually discovered her hiding spot and heartlessly pushed the poor woman off a cliff. 
In a desperate attempt to cover up his atrocious deeds, the bishop reported to setting fire to the cabin where the herdsmen lived, effectively snuffing out their lives. In the meantime, the bishop had kept the daughter confined in the underground chamber from the moment of her birth. Her inability to speak, feral demeanor, and intense fear of crosses were direct consequences of enduring 25 years of isolation and captivity. And during this, only the deceased priest was assigned as her sole caretaker by the bishop. It is also revealed that the priest did not kill himself, as it was believed previously. Instead, he met a tragic fate when he was pushed down the stairs by Senentunchi during her escape from the chapel. Hiding the truth, the bishop falsely portrayed that the priest ended his own life. However, defying all odds, Senentunchi managed to escape the bishop's grip and sought shelter at Irwin and Albert's lodge. With the bishop now arrested and imprisoned, Ryush embarks on his journey into the mountains to find the woman. In another flashback, Martin's condition deteriorates significantly due to blood poisoning from tetanus. After being bitten by Senentucci during the aggression, the truth comes to light that Martin had committed a murder having taken the life of his ex-girlfriend and had deceived Erwin and Albert to evade detection from the police. As he succumbs to the infection, Martin confesses his crime to Erwin and adamantly refuses to be taken to the village for medical care, fearing arrest. Therefore, in an effort to provide him with treatment at home, Erwin instructs Albert to fetch Absinthe from their storehouse, unaware that Senentunchi has been confined there by Martin. However, just as Albert enters through the door, Senentunchi mistakes him for either Erwin or Martin and strikes him with a glass bottle, rendering him unconscious. Realizing her mistake, she tries to revive Albert, but fails to do so. Meanwhile, frustrated by Albert's delay, Erwin arrives at the cabin to retrieve the absinthe himself. Then, Senentucci tries to communicate with him about Albert's condition, but he disregards her and instead chooses to set the cabin ablaze using the very same absinthe. However, Senentucci manages to escape through the roof. It is only later that he discovers Albert inside the burning house, with half of his body engulfed in flames, suffering the horrifying fate of being burned alive. Erwin then swiftly rescues his nephew from the fire and carries him home. Unfortunately, despite his efforts, Albert tragically succumbs to his injuries, passing away. Shortly after, Senentucci cautiously returns to the cabin, but is discovered by Erwin. He then proceeds to tie her up and attempts to eliminate her using a cross, convinced that she is the devil. Unfortunately, the poor woman's fear of crosses intensifies the situation, causing her to scream in terror. Meanwhile, Martin hears her cries and approaches the door, only to witness Erwin holding a knife, ready to kill Senentucci. Noticing a nearby gun, Martin weakly intervenes, ordering Erwin to release her. He emphasizes that he will not allow another woman to die in his presence, especially after the death of his ex-girlfriend. However, Erwin defies Martin's commands, leading to a confrontation between the two, during which Martin shoots Erwin in the arm. Finally complying with Martin's instructions, Erwin unites Senentucci and drops the knife to the floor, and in an unexpected turn of events, as Erwin approaches Martin, Senentucci seizes the opportunity to grab the knife from the ground and plunges it into Erwin's back, instantly ending his life. Several days after these events, Ryush finds Senentucci alive and well in the cabin, and the two are joyfully reunited. Afterwards, she leads him to another part of the cabin and gestures towards a door, signaling for him to open it. However, upon entering the room, Ryush is confronted with a horrifying discovery that churns his stomach, causing him to vomit in response to the gruesome scene before him. It is revealed that Senentucci had made dolls out of the skins and bodies of the three men, this revelation filled Ryush with both disgust and rage towards Senentucci, leading him to relentlessly chase after her. As a result, she escapes, closely pursued by Ryush, until they run so far that they become immersed in a dense fog, causing her to fall into a crevice. Ryush then runs after her toward the base of the mountain, only to discover her lifeless body and the skinned corpses of the three men from the cabin. Overwhelmed by a sense of responsibility and consumed by guilt over her death, he ultimately takes his own life by shooting himself. 
Returning to the present when the police investigators uncover the girl's skeletal remains, they finally realize that she was a human being all along, and not a demon. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.